kind of cool. here. Well, we want to welcome everybody to Breaking Out and Making Out, a creative workshop at home. Um, we are Art Possible Ohio, the statewide agency for art and disability. My name is Megan Feitz, and I am the director of programs. Um, we do a lot of really cool things at our organization, and we're so glad here that you are here today. Um, and um, one of the things that we do is we offer art support services and programs for individuals with disabilities all over the state, um, a program like this that we are offering to you today. Um, I, am, I do have a counterpart. Her name is Molly Uline Olmsted. She is the executive director. Um, between the two of us, we make up the entire organization. So, um, we are going to go ahead and get started. If individuals will join us, um, I do ask that you, you know, you put your your um, your screen into gallery. Uh, I'm sorry, instructor mode um, when teaching is happening. That'll be the best way for you to see what's going on. Um, if you're watching this. Um, watching this recorded, then you will, you will be able to see the instruction pretty clearly. Oh, we have someone coming in, so give me one second and I can repeat that for Miss Regina. Hello, Regina. <laughs> I'm just kind of giving, oh, she's still connecting. We'll give a second here. All right. I just wanna make sure Regina is here. You. I'm here. Hi, Regina. Okay, I'm gonna mute you again, real quick, and then we'll we'll unmute you in a little bit. Does that sound okay? Just wanted that to sounds, you. That sounds great. Thank okay. you. Okay. <laughs> so, Regina, right now we wanted to make sure. Um, just we're going over a few housekeeping rules before we get started. We want the screen um, that you're looking at right now to be um, in in, in um, gallery mode, so that you can see. Um, four squares of people and then once that instruction starts we're going to switch to speaker mode so you can see um, the instruction at close and you can find that control up in your right hand corner um, there should be a little button that says speaker view and gallery view so if you have any questions about that um, you can turn on your video and raise your hand or you can type it in the chat box which is the little um, uh, speech bubble at the bottom of the screen Um, so um, I think that we're going to go from here and I'm going to get ready to introduce um, Mary Davis and Chris Kiko Kobe. So Mary, why don't you take it away? <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Mary Davis. I've been a working artist for about 20 years in Columbus um, and I have done a lot of work with people with disabilities. I started a studio for people with disabilities a few years ago in Columbus. Um, and I'm now uh, sort of pulling back from that and just really kind of focusing on artwork, um, which has been great. So I'm really glad you guys are here. And I'm Chris Kiko Cozy. I've been teaching for 35 years, <laughs> music and art and gardening and nature studies. And right now I teach at a school for kids from kindergarten through eighth grade. And uh, we teach gardening and art outside a lot and lots of music and I'm glad to be here to share one of our fun exercises with you. And I have one more person with me. This is my assistant Larkin. Hi. Hey. She's a fantastic artist who is just starting on her artistic journey and yeah. it's going to assist today. All right, well, now we're going to go ahead um, and I'm going to just check in with Regina real quick and have her say hello, if that's okay. Regina, do you know how to unmute or I can unmute you? Yes, bear with me. I'm low vision and I'm looking at you on a little phone. I try to transfer you over to my iPad, but I still have some technical learning to do. 
okay. <laughs> I think all of us do. It's okay. Um, <laughs> Well, at, this is the point where you're going to want to go into speaker view um, if you can if, if, if you can figure that out, which is there's a little button on the top right hand corner and it, it says speaker view and you click on it and it'll make your the person talking larger and and then Mary and Chris, I'm sure you're going to do this already, but I would just encourage you to describe, you know, in in detail what you're sharing as well. Um, speaker view. I don't see it. I don't see it. I just see that whoever's speaking turns green. Okay. Is that good enough or no? <laughs> I just, <laughs> that is. <laughs> well, your border's not, it's green, not actually you. That, that is who will be speaking. Um, yeah. Is that and, cool? And maybe, yeah, that's fine with me as long as you can see um, who, who's speaking. I think that'll work for now. Yes, as long as you don't mind my face being up to you. Like <laughs> no. You're fine. We can't okay. speak. We can't speak right now. You're fine. Okay, cool. That's so good for you. <laughs> All right. Well, then we will go ahead and get started. Thank you for coming, Regina. I'm just going to unmute you for now, or I'm going to mute you for now. Okay. Most people do. <laughs> <laughs> so before, so before we started, um, there was a little message that was sent out for everybody to collect five objects. Um, so if you have those objects, hold them up or say whatever, these are my objects. Um, if you don't have your objects, just take like a quick 30 seconds, look around your table, grab five things. It doesn't matter how, what they are. Um, but what we're gonna do with those today is we're gonna take them and put them on a piece of paper and try to make them look like a face. So just go ahead and take your five items and organize them on your paper. And see if you can make a face out of them. And if you are muted, we encourage you to put some music on while you're making art. That was great. Yeah. All right, so once you have your objects arranged, what I'd like you to do is just take one marker or a pencil or a crayon or whatever you have and just really carefully outline around each object. And then um, I'll have Megan put up my first slide and that is just sort of what, what mine looked like after I put the objects in outlined them. And it's okay if it's not a perfect outline, you can just do your best to make a shape around it. So what you can see on the screen is the one that I did. So after you have it outlined, go ahead and take the objects off of the paper and put them to the side. I'm 
So if you're, if you're an artist and you're looking at this right now and thinking, wow, that's not my best work, don't worry, because this is more of an exercise to just get our brains thinking creatively and sort of pushing them in a different direction in hopes that we can kind of open some doors in our heads to fun, creative things that we've never done before. Um, as soon as you are done outlining, there's the next step, and, and you don't have to do all of this stuff. Um, I'm gonna talk about some things you can do to your face, and then Chris is gonna talk about things you can do to your face. Um, if you are somebody who really likes big, bold colors, um, I'll go ahead and show you the next slide. And all you're gonna do is just color it in. And then if you want to take it a step further, you can do what's called blocking out color. So if you go to the next slide, all I did was I drew an X or a, like a lowercase t um, and split the paper up into four sections. And then all I did was just fill it in. So this is a way that you can, this is a direction you can go with your piece if you want. Um, I would suggest picking colors like when you look at the purple against the light green of the mouth, it's very high contrast, which means it kind of pops. So using colors that are really opposite from each other is a cool way to, to arrange color. Um, but if you're somebody who likes more technical things and more detailed things, um, Chris is going to come on in a minute and show a really, really cool way to get your texture um, if you want more texture in your, in your face. So if this is what you want to do, um, you can go ahead and do it. Uh, but also, it's a good idea to wait because Chris is about to tell us about a really cool way to, to get some texture in your face. Chris, you're on mute. You are muted right now. Chris, you're on mute. There we go. Okay. So I collected objects from outside. So I have a garden and a big yard. And I collected objects the other day. So we'll look at that slide. And I found a rock that looked kind of like a nose. I have um, a branch from a hemlock bush and some grass seed tops, some dandelion eyes, and then I have some lamb quartered leaf ears. And now I'll show you the objects that I just did today. I'll pull my screen down here so you can see. It's very similar, but I used the dandelion for the nose this time. We still have the hemlock thing, branch for the mouth, a violet leaf, the nice shape of a heart. And then I had a strawberry leaf that had three lobes, and I took them apart to use for the eyes and the little top knot. And then we traced. And I have that face, but I'm actually going to work with the face that um, Mare showed you. And we're going to come up with something that's very detailed, but don't despair. It looks very complex, but we're going to break it down and look at the lines of our our vocabulary of lines. So if we're going to put a sentence together, we need words in our vocabulary. If we're going to put something complicated like this together with lines, we have to develop our vocabulary of 
lines. If we look around the room, if you look around the room or at your own body, you can see that there are curved lines and there are straight lines. So of course my paper has a straight line. My fingers have some curves, but also some straight. Uh, a doorknob is round, but the door has straight lines. And then there are combinations of straight lines and curved lines. So if you have a piece of practice paper, or you can just turn your paper over to the back. We're just gonna take a minute to look at some different kind of lines. So we make a straight line, make just a couple of straight lines, different lengths, different directions, slanty. So we have straight lines just by themselves. We can combine those so we can make zigzags. We can make them more straight up and down. So we have a line that looks more like that. We can even make a combination. So we can come up with all kinds of patterns of straight lines. Curve lines give us even more possibilities. So we have a simple curve. We can curve in either direction. We can put in a double curve like an S. You can make it very curvy. We can take it and make a wave. And we can make it wave like this. So let's take a second and try out a few of these. See what you think, which ones appeal to you. And I'm sure you will come up with your own. We can also do a full circle. There's lots we can do with circles, circles within circles. And then of course, flowers are circles within half circles with petals around the edge. Try something like that. We can also take that idea and make it into a spiral. So we start to make a circle, but we don't go to the end. We keep going in. We wind our way in so we can make spirals. We can also start in the center and wind our way out. We can try making a spiral. And don't worry if it looks lopsided. The beauty of this kind of doodling is that we don't really want it to look like computer generated art. We want it to look like a person came in and did it and it's very organic, very much like a garden where every flower petal is not exactly the same or every leaf. If we look at the strawberry leaf, all the tooth, the little tooth marks are different sizes and shapes. So it gives a very organic, earthy look. If we look at our branch here, they're not all the same length. They go in different directions. So it gives it a lot of movement. So we have some vocabulary to work with for our face. Now, I'm gonna turn this back over. And we're gonna start here. So we have a circle in the center for the nose. That's a place where we could try the circles within circles. So whatever you have on your face, if you wanna pick one place, and see about adding something. So I'm gonna add some circles and circles on my nose. What can you add to your nose? Chris, can you move your paper over to the right just a little oh. bit? There we go, Sorry. thank you. 
Thank you. So I can go further with this. I can, so I just did some circles and some curving. So I, let me contrast that now with some straight lines. So I can take some straight lines and go around this center one. It doesn't matter if they're spaced evenly. So now I've added a contrast of some straight lines and some extra spaces for coloring. And perhaps then I want to leave this one plain, but I want to do maybe a scallopy petal on the outside. Take that all the way around. Okay. So next I could add, um, let's add some triangles. So we're gonna take some little triangles. We're gonna keep going around this one and make it a little bit bigger. So maybe where these little indents are, I will make some triangles. So you can look at yours and see if there's a triangle or a square or a dot. Something you can add around your nose to start making it more like a it's called a mandala, a little circle of art work. All right. Let's move now to the eyes. So we have one eye that's circular and one eye that's a little bit kidney shaped, like a like a bean. And we can outline again to make those a little bit bigger. So let's try, um, maybe try a jaggedy outline. And maybe only on the top, sort of like eyelashes. And then let's say with this circle, we spiral in. Give it a little spiral. Is there a place on your face that a spiral would work nicely? Or do you have some other idea? Look at the other eye. We could do a kind of a funny spiral here. Let's see if we can follow, follow this one in its funny shape and still spiral in. All right, so let's see, we have some nice jaggies, we have spirals, we have petals, we have some triangles, and then we have the mouth. What could we do with the mouth? So it's long, it bulges off on the end here, it's most, well, it's curvy and it's straight. So let's see, why don't we start by dividing it in half this way. We'll go through almost like lips and divide it in half. And then we want to do something different on each half. So the, the way to get all the contrast that we got here is to try to do different things to offset each other. So why don't we do our, one of our curvy lines across the upper lip. You can fill that up with a curvy line. And actually I kind of like the way that looks. So maybe I'll also do it on the bottom. Let 
So that gives us lots of spaces for color. Now that leaves us with the hair up here. And it's one big curvy wavy thing. I'd say, let's see, what, what do you think would look good here? We could go curvy inside. We could contrast and make some lines. Maybe we'll do that. We'll divide it up with some straight lines. That gives us something to work with. And we could do, actually could do something completely different in each one. So anywhere on your face where there's a bigger space, to divide it up in smaller spaces and try out a bunch of different things. So we could maybe do some straight across striping on this one. And then maybe we do some polka dots to contrast in that one. All right, and then this one, maybe we do some zigzagging across. Okay, and just always keep stepping back and looking and seeing what you feel inspired to do next. So we look at this, we look at the whole picture, what might be a nice shape for the next one? Something kind of curvy, maybe like, um, like a teardrop where it's coming down like raindrops. You could fill up that space with some drops. And then we kind of have this straight curve, straight curve. So maybe we'll stay with that pattern and think of another straight line inspired once so over here we had the one that bumped up and down like buildings in the city and then we could try putting some of those in there it's like a puzzle pieces And that leaves us with our last one, which we need something circular. So think about what that might be. We have polka dots, we have teardrops. We could do maybe, we could do some spiral, little spirals. I think we could fit three spirals in there. So we have that nice little texture across there. We've got lots going on in the eyes. We've got this little mandala of shapes for the nose and the squiggle design down here for the mouth. We can leave it at that or with this one. I then connect, started connecting them together. So it all depends on how, how simple or complex you want to do it. How are we on time? We're pretty good on time. We're, we're pretty good on time. Um, are there any questions? I will unmute everybody um, so that if you have a question, you can just ask it. So um, give me one second to unmute you. Um, why isn't it? There we go. I'm unmuted. There we go. Regina, do you have any questions? I'm, uh, am I going too fast? No, you're not. It seems like a 
I anticipate everything you're going to say <laughs> before you. So I started doing things. And then I heard you say do them. And I'm like, I, I had already started. So I hope. Um, no, that's, I, yeah. <laughs> that's I, I, was, I, I guess I was feeling what you were saying because I started doing things. And then you said, okay, and now you can do this. And I'm like, oh, wow, I started doing that before she said. So <laughs> awesome. I guess I'm Great. good. Great. Yeah. Well, yeah, the, 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 I, the working with the face and the simple shapes is really inspires yeah. us to, to try out different things around it, especially if we have our, like I said, we have our vocabulary, our groups of, of lines and um, curves that we use. And, and the way to build up our vocabulary is just to walk around with a piece of paper and look at things and see, look for patterns. You know, if you're a brick wall, so you, you're walking along and there's a brick wall. You know, so it's got its patterns of bricks. So there's a straight line pattern. Or um, if I go out to the garden right now, there's a lot of, uh, there are a lot of tomatoes, which have a shape like that, you know, with the green part. Um, so that's, that's another vocabulary of not quite a circle, more towards a heart, but also we can add little um, contrasting pieces in. Another one is, I have a lot of uh, butternut squash now, so they're more mm. like that. So we, we, we just go around, we just look at shapes and we copy them. And then they're in our brain there so that when we are faced with something like this that we want to doodle on and make more complex, that they start popping out like they did for Regina when she just saw her part and just knew what to do next. Yes. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. We could also with this, like um, Mary showed, you could block it with color. You could do the, you know, divide it up and put blocks of color behind it. But, or you could go totally wild and do the whole thing in doodle. So I could start making some lines that take me out to the edge of the paper and start dividing the paper first in sections that aren't too small. And now I have some things to work with. So I can start expanding it. Like I expanded out from the nose. I can start doing that with the mouth. So I could, you know, if I want to do some straight lining out from there. And go back to this idea of how I took it, the triangles and put something in between. So maybe I want to put some, um, uh, I like the triangles, but maybe like diamond shape. And again, I'm not looking for perfect diamonds. It's kind of nice that they're all really different because it's like being outside in nature in a garden. So I make a pattern where each, between each line, there is a diamond. And then maybe, oops. Where can I go from there? I can then, let's say, take a look at it. What is it asking for? Maybe, maybe let's actually extend this. That's kind of cool. Just like the tomato top, how it had the little leaves on the little tomato that I drew. This little fountains coming out. Okay, so we can just keep going and going 
forever until we get all the way to the edge of the paper. So then we can talk about color. Um, if I put this up, Mayor, do you want to talk about some color on this? About how we cho out choosing colors? Yeah. Um, so I have this, um, which is the one that we had before, but I put put the, the pattern stuff in there. Um, and the main thing with, with colors is you have to decide if you want it to be, to sort of flow together almost like a sunset, or if you want it to be like popping like a cartoon. So if you want it to be more of a sunset, you would pick colors that all sort of go together, right? So if you think about, you know, if you ever learned how to mix colors and what they make, you know, there are certain colors that if you mix all together, they look really muddy. And there are certain ones that look really nice together. So if you think about the ocean, it's all blues and greens. And those are all colors that will flow together. If you think about a uh, Scooby-Doo cartoon, it's very, very hard lines and a lot of really high contrast. So I was going for the Scooby-Doo here. And, and so if you see, I took a bunch of colors that really do not, like they don't go together and they're not similar. If they were similar, if it was maybe this, there's more purple in the pink, that's when it looks sort of like an ocean or a sunset. Um, or even if you look at your own face, right? If you want it to look kind of realistic, you're not gonna like outline your eyes, outline your face. You know, you, you'll use colors, so sort of yellows and some tan to make the darks and the lights on a face. Or you could do Scooby-Doo style, which is what I did. Um, and if you have a color wheel, you can always look on the color wheel and whatever color is opposite the color that you're using is gonna be, it's gonna make it look cartoony and like Scooby-Doo-like. Um, and so that's also very helpful. So let's, uh, let's do the one where we have more of the colors that go together. Do we have time for that? So let's take look at, look at the nose here. And my favorite colors, you can tell from the colors I have on, are in the purple family. So let's just pull out those, some of those colors. So I'll start with, where's my purple? So maybe I'll start with the dark purple in the center. And then I'll go with this version of the purple. I'll do every other one. And then we'll take this more pinky purple, but it's still pretty close. So things are really kind of blending into each other. And then we'll take the light pink around. This is not my best coloring. I'm trying to do this quickly. So here we have the, the red purple family all mixed around. So they all go together, They're kind of calming. This is sort of very um, meditative. It helps your mind calm down because your mind is, oh, it's like, oh, all those colors go together. I think I'll take a rest. Where when Mary talks about the Scooby-Doo, it's enlivening and it makes you want to get up and move around and go for a walk. <laughs> so the way we color our, any art making that we do, we can really affect the, the way it, um, we can affect how people experience it. So if, if we want to give a calming effect to the people who look at our art, we can go with more uh, rounded, curvy shapes, blendy colors, 
And if we want more of an enlivening, get people excited, more bold colors, jaggedy lines, something that looks like a lot of like this down here. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of energy there. So we've got this mouth that's like ready to go. And this nose is saying, no, let's stay home. <laughs> So there's an example of what she was saying about a family of color. Those incidentally are the art possible. Those are very similar to our, our art possible Ohio branding colors. So I approve, Chris. I <laughs> oh, good. Today. Oh, good. <laughs> um, we have about um, a few more minutes if we want to anybody wants to ask any questions i know you have your helper there larkin i didn't know if larkin had any questions or regina if you have anything additional and these don't necessarily have to be questions about the activity chris and mayor both are teaching artists um and might be able to answer any other questions you might have um i know that this is a, a time uh, a strange time to be an artist or an aspiring artist or an emerging artist and we are all stuck in our homes with limited resources. Um, and, um, and as are Chris and Mayor. So <laughs> if you have any questions about, oh, well, I know Chris goes to school, but if you have any questions about um, other kinds of projects you might do or, or ways to kind of rejuvenate that spark, feel free to jump, jump on. I have a question about something, um, if I may. Yes. I am, um, I'm about to enter um, uh, the call for art. Um, <laughs> woo, woo, woo. <laughs> so I'm the, I, I, um, I was selected, my art was selected this, this year and the year before. And both times I entered as emerging artists. And I don't know from nothing. I mean, I'm, I'm self-taught. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I waited until I lost my sight to decide to be an artist, which I was always low vision, but the seems like the worse my eyesight got, the more I felt I needed to do art. So now I'm, I've networked in Facebook and everything, and I've met, I've got, I have a, a, a clientele, and I'm actually making a little bit of dough, just enough to buy more supplies. My question is, how, when I do this call for art, Mm -hmm. When do I know I'm ready to leave emerging artists and go to, is this a dumb question? I mean, I know I'm not the only person to ask this question. How do I know if I'm like, oh, I'm a professional <laughs> or if I'm just emerging? I know I'm not youth. I'm 65. <laughs> like, um, I will give my two cents and I will also let uh, Molly may have something and, and I will let uh, Mayor and Chris answer also if they have any two cents. But um, I would say if you've been accepted twice, you have arrived, but it is <laughs> honestly, from Art Possible Ohio's point of view, it is up to you to decide what level you are comfortable entering. So we have had yeah. multiple artists enter for years under emerging because that is where they're comfortable entering. And then some <laughs> have transitioned into the professional category. Um, yeah, because if you do professional, you got to step it up. Now you can, <laughs> you know, you got to put your big girl pants on and actually act like you know what you're doing. <laughs> Uh, so I, that is my perspective. So, you know, we will not tell you what to do. We trust you. But I don't know, based on your, your experience with artists, Molly, Mayor, or Chris, what, what advice would you have? Yes. <laughs> I would say, this is Molly. I have my video off because my internet has been really spotty and I don't, like, video seems to make it mad. Okay. So, um, I would say that a lot of people... Um, make the determination between professional and emerging based on whether or not they sell their work regularly. So they link it up to how they, like if they're, if they have people who regularly purchase their art. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I sort of feel a little bit more in line with how Megan feels that it's more of like, you can self-determine that there's no like yeah. final like oh i've done this therefore i am professional i received my art license so now i'm professional okay um, i think you can sort of make the decision on your 
own how you feel about it. Okay. So you'll know, we'll, you'll know in your own heart, if you're honest with yourself, you know, is that yeah. what you're saying? Okay. All right. Well, I feel like I'm always going to be an emerging artist of the day. I <laughs> But I think that's because I'm totally always fine. learning. I'm always learning. You know, that's why I feel like I'm not professional yet. But I guess once you know all there is to know, then I don't know that there. If you figure that out, let us know because I. <laughs> all right. Well, all the all there is to know. Um, I would say though that uh, for me, I um, I sort of tried, kind of made the transition into taking myself more seriously as an artist when I developed a style. Um, okay. I think, so there was a lot, a lot of years where I was just trying a million things and I'm a mixed media artist. So I still try a million things, but um, over the last few years, I think I've really developed a style. And for me, that kind of makes me feel a little more professional, but I also want to echo what Megan said, you know, it's, it's really however you feel. Yeah. Um, I always tell, especially young people, I always tell them when they're like, I want to be an artist. I say, mm -hmm. well, let me know uh, what the test is to take. And <laughs> when you pass yeah. it, you know, I always just say, if you're making art, you're an artist. And so- Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Leonardo da Vinci says that a true artist is one that really lets inspiration come through and out and it go yeah. it bypasses the thinking if you're thinking your art then maybe you're an emerging artist but if you're able to really let it come through you yeah which it sounds like you probably do it, <laughs> yeah well yeah i feel like i'm not um useful mm -hmm. if i'm not arting if i'm not arting <laughs> if i'm not singing or dancing or drawing or painting or doing something i don't feel like i'm I'm doing what God wanted me to do. I feel like I'm schlepping, like I'm just sitting around, you know. <laughs> Even if I'm working and doing something worthwhile, if it's not art, I'm like, oh yeah, well you could be, you know the time you spend doing this, you could be doing some art. That's all I think about. So I feel like, yeah, I'm an artist, but I don't know if I'm professional, but I'll just pray on it. <laughs> I'll know what to write down when it yeah. comes. I, I'll know. In that moment, when you click the, the, the box, it'll be yes. the answer. I'll do it. <laughs> and one thing that I wanted to add, which is unrelated, and I, thanks for sharing that. That's a really good thing for all of us to just think about now and then kind of yeah. own, our, own where we're at. Um, yeah. But in that, we're, that some of us are stuck at home. We don't have a lot of materials. Uh, and, you know, I'm, and I'm encouraging you to go out and just sketch everything you see that uh, you can go into your recycling you can pull out an envelope and you know open it up. Uh -huh. Messy right now, but if you open it up, cut the size. You have sketch paper. Even All right. if you take a cracker box, open it up. You've got actually got quite a surface. Now, see, that's an artist. <laughs> of sketch paper. All so, right. So you know, then, then you don't have to worry about using up all your paper to practice looking for designs and inspirations in you know the world around you so i think i, I think i learned this from mr rogers a long time ago <laughs> i think i remember that for, i'm serious actually <laughs> i think without knowing it uh, all like all of us probably are quoting mr rogers all the time <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah. that's right that's right Absolutely. I As a matter of fact, I do that every morning. I, I know people think I'm already crazy because almost every morning, especially in the summer, I open up my porch and I yell out, it's a wonderful day in the neighborhood. <laughs> Hi, neighbor. I have yet to have anybody yell back, but. <laughs> that would make me so happy to hear that. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I would, I do want to be, oh, hi, Larka, do you have anything you want to add? No. No? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. You don't have to. I wanted to um, ask if anybody wanted to share the artwork um, that they worked on today. Um, <laughs> no pressure. Um, I just thought that I would throw that out there. If anybody did anything, we could turn on your camera for you. Um, Larkin Lark said she didn't want to share, but she is 
she's also really obsessed with alcohol inks right now. We've been, both of us have been playing with them. And so she has under her face, she has a whole like beautiful color scheme of alcohol inks that kind of make like a, a big beard on her person. That's wonderful. <laughs> Far out. That's cool. Yeah, I could show mine. I, I'm not finished, but That's okay. I could show how I had started doing stuff before the instructor started telling me. <laughs> I can show you that. Be able to turn your camera yeah. on. Let's see. How do I do this? It says, just answer to start your video. Okay. I don't know how, though. Oh, did oh, I do it? I yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hi. Oh, yeah. Let me Am I turning you there? Nice. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> hey, how you doing? <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it's a self-portrait. <laughs> that is really vibrant. I love it. Um, great. And I'm and, and just me and my, I will let you know that I'm going to send a, a follow-up email. If you want to share your art with us, um, you can share it on our social media and I'll have instructions how to do that in the email, or you can send a picture of it to me and I'll share it if you're comfortable with that. It doesn't have to be my name. It could be anonymous. There is no pressure. Um, I just wanted to let you know that that is an option for you because we would love to share your art with the world. Um, but I, I personally would be shy to do that. So again, um, I understand. If you, if you today. Um, and I do want to take the time to thank you all for being here today. Um, like I said earlier, it's an unusual time and um, this is, you know, a new way of us doing programming. So we appreciate you hanging in there with us. If there were any hiccups or just, you know, learning the new format, turning your camera on and off, all the things that we have to figure out as we go. Um, we will be offering another workshop um, for any artists interested um, and entering into our accessible, um, our accessible expressions exhibit or any other kind of um, art exhibit. This workshop will be led um, by Lori Esposito with Athens. Oh, she used to work for Athens Photo Project. And now um, and she's also a teaching artist for Art Possible Ohio. She will be teaching you how to photograph your artwork for exhibitions so that um, your artwork yeah, and, and how to save it and how to share it and everything and with whatever kind of device you have in your home. Um, that is November 7th at 2 p.m. You register, Regina, you're already registered, but um, yes, yes. anybody else, <laughs> you just email us at Art Possible and we'll get you signed up. Um, and we'll also have information about that call for art and that email that I sent out to you. But you can find most of this information on all our social media platforms and our website, uh, www.artpossibleohio.org. Um, so I want to, again, thank everybody for being here. Does anybody have a last minute uh, comment or question before Chris takes us out today? No. All right. Chris, do you want to take it away? All right. So the way that I like to and all my classes at school is we just take a moment to take some deep breaths because just like eating food it needs to digest just like using color and using art it does something to our brain and if we take a moment and really breathe and let that integrate and give it a moment to digest it has a more lasting effect as far as staying with us but also for our own health and well-being so if we just if you put your hand on your belly, because taking a deep breath so that your belly comes out. And just breathing in and out through your nose, just very gently. Feeling when we relax like that, it tells our body that we're safe, that it can take the time to integrate what we just learned. Our brain does its little thing. It finds places in all of its compartments for the information that we've taken in. And we can just put a gentle smile on our face and let that melt inside of us, smiling at our ability to do art, smiling at our creativity, and just being grateful 
that we can be together and create art and make each other laugh and have a good day because that's what makes the world a better place. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful week. Um, and I hope to hear from you or see from you all soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.